Hello, everyone. I'm Rick R. Reed, and I'm the author of the upcoming book, The Man from Milwaukee, which will be out on July 20th of this year from Nine Star Press. Today, I'd like to share a little of the story with you. So here we go. Emory Hughes stared at the picture of Jeffrey Dahmer on the front page of the Chicago Tribune, the man in Milwaukee who had confessed to drugging and strangling his victims and dismembering them. The picture was grainy, showing a young man who looked timid and tired, not someone you'd expect to be a serial killer. Emory took in the details as the L swung around a bend, lank pale hair, looking dirty, and as if someone had taken a comb to it just before the photograph was snapped. Heavy eyelids, the smirk, as if Dahmer had no understanding of what was happening to him, blinded suddenly by notoriety. The stubble, at least three days old, growing on his face. Emery even noticed the way a small curl topped his shirt's white collar. The L twisted, suddenly a ride from Six Flags, and Emery almost dropped the newspaper, clutching for the metal pole to keep from falling. The train's dizzying pace, taking the curves too fast, made Emery's stomach churn. Or was it the details of the story that were making the nausea in him grow and blossom? Details like how Dahmer had boiled some of his victims' skulls to preserve them. Milwaukee medical examiner Jeffrey Jensen said authorities had recovered five full skeletons from Dahmer's apartment and partial remains of six others. They discovered four severed heads in his kitchen Emery read that the killer had also admitted to cannibalism. Sick, huh? Emery jumped in a voice behind him. A pudgy man, face florid with sweat and heat, pressed close. The bulge of the man's stomach nudged against the small of Emery's back. Emery hugged the newspaper to his chest, wishing there was somewhere else he could go. But the L at rush hour was crowded with commuters, moist from the heat, wearing identical expressions of boredom. Hard to believe some of the things that guy did, the man continued, undaunted by Emery's refusal to meet his eyes. He's a queer. They all want to give the queer special privileges and act like there's nothing wrong with them. And then look what happens. The guy snorted. Nothing wrong with them. Right. Emery wished the man would move away. The sour odor of the man's sweat mingled with cheap cologne, something like Old Spice. Hadn't his father worn Old Spice? Emery gripped the pole until his knuckles whitened, staring down at the newspaper he had found abandoned on a seat at the Belmont stop. Maybe if he sees I'm reading, he'll shut up. Every time the man spoke, his accent broad and twangy, his voice nasal, Emery felt like someone was raking a metal tooth comb across the soft pink surface of his brain. Neighbors had complained off and on for more than a year about a putrid stench from Dahmer's apartment. He told them the refrigerator was broken and meat in it had spoiled. Others reported hearing hand and power saws buzzing in the apartment at odd hours. Yeah, this guy Dahmer. You hear what he did to some of these guys? Emery turned at last. He was trembling and the muscles in his jaws clenched and unclenched. He knew his voice was coming out high, and that because of this, the man might think he was queer, but he had to make him stop. Listen, sir, I really have no use for your opinions. I ask you now, very sincerely, to let me be so that I might finish reading my newspaper. The guy sucked in some air. Yeah, sure, he mumbled. Emery looked down once more at the picture of Dahmer, trying to delve into the dots that made up the serial killer's eyes. Perhaps somewhere in the dark orbs he could find evidence of madness. Perhaps the pixels would coalesce to explain the atrocities this bland-looking young man had perpetrated, the pain and suffering he'd caused. To what end? Granville next. Granville will be the next stop. The voice, garbled and cloaked in static, alerted Emery that his stop was coming up. As the train slowed, Emery let the newspaper, never really his own, slip from his fingers. 
The train stopped with a lurch, and Emery looked out at the familiar green sign reading Granville. With the back of his hand, he wiped the sweat from his brow and prepared to step off the train. Then an image assailed him. Dahmer's face, lying on the brown, grimy floor of the L, being trampled. Emery turned back, bumping into commuters who were trying to get off the train, and stooped to snatch the newspaper up from the gritty floor. Tenderly, he brushed dirt from Dahmer's picture and stuck the newspaper under his arm. Thanks for listening. Hope you'll give the man from Milwaukee a try. It will be available from Nine Star Press, Amazon, and all major retailers. Thanks again.